from a parent's perspective, um, and the one of the reasons I wanted to work with you in trying to get something that would be much more ex easy for them to digest and understand, is to have uh, uh, something that's very clear and, and, and easy to follow so that they feel more in control of what's happening around them rather than feeling it's all happening to them. Um, and that, that is the big challenge that, that we're facing. Um, and of course, come September the 1st, um, we don't just press a button and the machine starts working. We know that that is just not the case at all. Hence, we've got sort of the slower burn of making sure we don't overburden local authorities. We want to make sure that they can actually deliver what they, they say they can deliver. But at the same time, we want to make sure that uh, parents and young people are at the centre of what happens, whether it's developing the local offer, whether it's actually at the um, uh, assessment and planning stage, let alone the implementation and review stage of whether it's SEND support or the EHC plan, and also those really important transition points. And I think it's important that parents know that in terms of the definitions uh, and the criteria that exist currently, they, they, they do not change. And I think you picked up on something I said in one of my uh, other little mini videos, uh, was that just because a child or young person is, is, move, is, is moving from one system to another is not a reason to remove their plan um, that they currently uh, have the benefit of. Um, that is not valid. Um, Lord Nash has said the same thing in the House of Lords. So um, we, we will be repeating that and we'll be testing that out against local authorities because the accountability of this is going to be key. Schools need to be um, as involved as anybody else in working with the family towards meeting the outcomes. It will either be in their plan or their send support that's, that's put in place. Uh, and I don't know if you've seen um, David Bartram's uh, sort of one minute video that he put together explaining, yeah. explaining to teachers and parents this is what these reforms mean. I think that's a really excellent way of doing what we were talking about earlier, of some very simple messages of explaining this is what uh, this is actually all about. Um, and I think I the Surrey video that was yeah. made some time ago is still stands. Yeah, yeah, it's still very valid and makes yeah. makes all the right points. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the Nason Sen Gateway has been set up. So so s schools actually have um, a really good uh, up to date resource of how this works best and how they can uh, embed it into and their own you, schools. How are you getting the message out to schools that it's actually there? Well, uh, through a whole whole host of communications. One is uh, through local authorities themselves. Obviously, a large number of schools um, are local authority run. Uh, we're doing it through through Nason, through CDC, and communications that way as well as well as directly through the DfE. There's um, a lot less missives that come from the department than there used to be, uh, but the one that comes over the summer uh, is one that I've made sure that there has uh, a very clear uh, direct link to everything that they need to do to be ready. For the SEN reforms, and is all that information available to parents as well? Because I think then you know you end up with the Chinese whispers if they're not seeing all of the schools they're seeing, and you know they're not necessarily being kept up to date. So that would be you know is that nascent SEN gateway something that yeah. parents could access too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean we expect it to be mainly professionals who use it, mm -hmm. but of course we want parents um, who yeah. want to know what it is that they're basing decisions on for their for their children, uh, what that information is. I think mm. what what parents. Um, and teachers don't understand is how the health and the personal budgets and the social care will work alongside the education. How is it going to work? How are they going to put that all together? So for example, again, my younger son has health needs, so his, uh, his care is in London. How does that all come together? Well, the, the reason why we've called them education, health and care plans is because all, all of them have uh, uh, as much input that they would have to have into uh, a child's uh, plan uh, than any of the others involved, depending on those child's individual needs. But by having the, the new duty on health, they now have to come to the table and they have to, from right from the very start, be involved in the planning uh, and as, uh, assessment and planning for, for, for that family. But for me, what will make the difference for parents, and this is an example of uh, a parent that I met up in Manchester, um, who told me for the first time they've actually sat down in a room with some from education, some from health, and some from social care, who haven't just told them this is what's going to happen. They've actually asked them some questions themselves about what is it that you need uh, to reach the, the goals that we think we, we should be ambitious for, for this, um, this young person. Um, and that's, that's where the change has to be in that education, health and social care are working together right from the very start 
for that family rather than coming in only at the point at which they think uh, they should get involved. Um, so that, that's where the experience should be changing for parents. But also we know that for many of them it can be quite a, uh, a very convoluted, uh, very labyrinthine um, whole system that they're having to work within. So that's why uh, having spoken to a lot of parents about what would really be of value to them in trying to navigate themselves through all of that and understand what education, health and social care should be doing for them is bringing in the independent supporters, uh, the 30 million that we're spending over two years, who are genuinely independent from local authorities, from the health service, uh, who may be parents themselves who have been involved with the SEN system, uh, maybe charities working in their local area but have been trained up to support them uh, so that should they need help and guidance through all of that process, uh, they've got someone to talk to um, who is consistent and has the knowledge which they may not have acquired yet themselves as parents so that they can gain confidence of, in taking control of the choices that are out there for them, which includes personal budgets. And we know from some of the trialling of personal budgets already that parents have seen real benefits to them in whether it's trying to organise better transport, whether it's trying to buy in other services, uh, it's given them a, a greater leverage into what actually is available. And if you combine that also with them being uh, directly involved in the production of the local offer, being able to hold local authorities to account as to what services will be available, it is putting parents in the driving seat where we want them to be. Uh, but um, I want to make sure, as the Minister, that they get the support from us here too. And so just because September uh, is the day that we start the new system is not the day that I, I stop being uh, completely focused on its really good implementation and delivery. Because this will only work um, if parents and children involved with special education using disability feel it happen to them. I think that the issues again will always come down to it's how the local authority and the school works and individuals and yes some of them are going to be very good and do the person centred and make sure it's all about you know meet I mean what you're talking about education health and care all meeting in the same room that's ideal and that's exactly what we'd all love mm. but in reality that's not going to happen I mean in Kent you've got six and a half thousand children with a statement you've got twenty two and a half thousand children with SEN you know with all the best will in the world that's not going to happen for every parent to actually sit in that room with everybody in the or you're going to have representatives who can't make decisions I just think that again, needs to be in the code of practice you were just asking how we could change how it, what you could put in um, at those multi-agency meetings yeah. when they're trying to decide you have to have the people who can make the decisions and if something like that was in the code of practice that would again set the bar, yeah. do you think? Yeah, to say, you know, there's no point just sending your junior person there who says, I'll have to go back and ask, and then it gets lost in a whole load of yeah. paperwork. Mm. You need the decision makers at the table mm. to move things forward because there is only 20 weeks from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get the people who can make the decisions, you're not going to make the deadline. Yeah.